Alright guys, time to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Lots going on on the timeline the last 24 hours or so. Some absolute chaos in the search and destroy scene. Some nominations for the esports awards that are certainly causing a lot to debate. Lots to discuss today. Very much intrigued. Your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing not thought this is hilarious. Obviously, the came out already. The zoo was reacting to you right here. But the first thing that we have to talk about is, um, well, I wish we didn't have to talk about it. To be honest, I don't generally like to get into personal stuff for people that aren't necessarily like pro players or incredibly related to the COD scene. But Rally is certainly someone who's been around the COD scene for nearly a year, very well connected within the scene. So, um, you know, I, I think it's worth touching on this story most certainly. Esports Talk did a more in depth video if you guys want to check that out. I'll leave everything linked down below. But effectively, Rally, if you guys know, um, well, if you guys know Rally, like I think he was on Optic, like um, there was some drama that came out about him actually like a couple of years ago now, or, like maybe a year ago or so, when he was kind of suggesting that like it was Hex's fault with the whole infinite stuff that, um, because like, I'm pretty sure he, not necessarily he got left behind, but he kind of joined Optic when the whole Infinite ownership was in place, and then like um, when Hex and Co went off to Chicago Huntsman and did the NRG thing, he kind of didn't get brought along with them, and then some things were said as a result, but um, anyway, he's been around the Search and Destroy community for years, and this comes out from, uh, you know, his girlfriend, like, I guess ex-girlfriend now, talking about the abuse that she, um, you know, suffered really in their relationship, and uh, you know, of course, if this isn't bad enough, there are a few other girls that he's, you know, been dating in the past come out and say similar things, and then of course he comes out with a response, I mean, you know, this what he says on the timeline, and uh, every single response he did made the situation worse. It was actually quite impressive how um, yeah how he managed to spin this in the worst possible way. So fair play, I suppose. And then of course uh, this comes out, which is completely outrageous. I mean, uh, yeah, it doesn't even it doesn't even need saying at this point. Um, yeah. Anyway, this video, like uh, the initial response from Rally to this video, was like, oh, well, I have no recollection of this, uh, which is just mind blowing. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to check it out. Like, I'm not going to play it on screen. I'm not going to read the words. You guys can see it with your own two eyes, especially uh, you know the, the individuals that he's uh, well talking about. In this video right here. If this is indeed him, right? Because of course his initial response comes out and says the following. Swag, of course, is like, you know, rallied brother. Like, uh, are you good? Brother, getting to the bottom of this tomorrow, I have no recollection of ever saying this in my entire life. But, um, you know, since then he's deleted the tweet because it, you know, it comes out that, yeah, okay, this was him in the video. And, um, I mean, like, I, I just can't believe some of this stuff, honestly. Like, this came out as well. He did a tweet longer, which I'm not even sure if it's been deleted. Like, I, I wasn't going to read the entire thing, to be honest. Um, you know, and he comes out with, with this video as well. It's almost like the classic thing, like, I'm not, I'm not racist because I've got a black friend or whatever. It's um, honestly, you can't make this stuff up. But um, anyway, this is what happened and I just thought, you know, this came out as well from Rally. Like, a lot of uh, pro players that were involved in kind of the discussion about this. this is why I thought it warranted discussion here on the channel. Like, Miracles, of course, Black Ops 2 World Champion, yeah, unacceptable. And understandably so. Like, it was actually, um, as I say, like, it was uh, truly impressive to see that every single apology made his position even worse. And, um, yeah, now he's getting completely clowned on the timeline. And understandably so, to be honest, after, you know, an absolute travesty of a few days. This was some of the further reactions Action really from some of the competitive Call of Duty players. For example, Pac-Man says this only non-crazy S&D kid, kind of referring to, you know, <laughs> Rally, for example, was Decimate, right? And of course, so many of our pro players have come up through the Search and Destroy scene. And certainly some of them have had, you know, questionable clips that have come up from their streams in the past. You know, you know I'm sure you guys might remember the Pharaoh one. And certainly other players have said words that I'm sure maybe they regret or wish they didn't say at the time. But it certainly has been happening through the COD scene. I mean, since there's, you know, Funny Twitch, Your Safe Disasties, Tyler, that being a BZ, isn't. Dashi comes in the reply with the question mark also as well. And, um, you know, of course, so many of our pro players are Search and Destroy kids. Maybe Pac-Man saying that some of these other guys also have questionable past in a sense, which, I mean, yeah, obviously everyone's kids, right? You do crazy stuff. Of course, saying some word on stream, which many of these pro players have done uh, many years ago in the past when they were kids, is that, you know, it's different, I suppose, to the rally situation, which seems to be relatively recently. But, you know, Blast, for example, another one, Stop the Cap, he's just one of those other guys said the N-word before too. I mean, a lot of these guys have said that type of stuff on stream in the past. But, um, yeah, maybe that's kind of what Pac-Man's getting at, right? Only non crazy S and kids was decimate, and uh, the rest of the guys it's kind of chaos. This was Aix's reaction, for example, when I made Twitter ten plus years ago for Core Community. No idea it would turn into a public diary of people's relationships and details of their private lives. So where every other week there's new entries with different people. Yeah, Twitter's absolute chaos. But um, yeah, thought it was a topic that we should really touch on here on the channel, given um, well how close it is really to the competitive Call of Duty scene. Let's move on into something which could be a little bit more positive. At least um, well, what's going to be going on with the Optic team? Sender tweets this out. I don't know whether this tweet is kind of implying 
like looking at uh, what's going on here on the timeline in absolute chaos and tend to be like, wow, what's going on? Or is this the kind of thing where Cinder's looking out the window at other people having a good time? Because uh, that is the question mark right now with Optic, with Dallas Optic, Optic Dallas, whatever it's going to be. Is Cinder going to be there as a coach once again? Is Rambo going to take over that responsibility? Is Cinder going to be left on the sidelines? Is he going to wanna go to another organization? Very much up in the air at the present time. We get this as well from the Dallas Empire. A couple of people mentioned here that on the right hand side, this picture of Illy, it's up when they're playing the Huntsman with the Huntsman logo in the background. Chicago, the Optic guys, you know how it goes. Counting down the days till we see this duo back on the main stage. So certainly, Illy and Shotzi are going to be teaming up. What is their team going to be though for the Dallas Empire? They don't not exactly explain that one quite as of yet, but uh, hopefully we'll have some confirmation here in the coming days. Let's talk about this then from the Esports Awards. So they confirm the yeah, well, Esports Controller Player of the Year. So many, I mean, every single year, Call of Duty players absolutely kill the nominations and usually kill the actual award ceremony as well. So we'll dive into um, you know which players are nominated, which players are in a good position to actually win something, go through and do some announcements. So okay, this from the Controller Player of the Year. I mean, Simba and Abizi both nominated it, certainly understandably. So Controller Player of the Year, usually, um, well, usually the COD players do pretty well in this one. I'm pretty sure that um, like the, whoever makes the decisions, I think maybe it's, um, obviously it's partly public voted here, but um, I think like maybe at least the decisions for who actually gets nominated comes from the judges. I think the judges also have an involvement in, uh, you know, who gets voted for it as well, who actually wins the award at the end of the day, not just full public votes, because I guess that would be, could be biased to some degree. This also from the caster of the year. So um, Miles Rosser, as we'll see in a second here, and, well, received a nomination for the play-by-play -play caster of the year, and his partner Chance received a color caster of the year. Totally understandably so. I think this year, like, Miles and Chance were the best year that we had for casters. I think, um, yeah, don't get me wrong, Maven and Merc are absolutely phenomenal. I think they get better in land, though. I think Maven's a much better caster in a land environment than he is online, and uh, Miles and Chance just kill it regardless. These guys are out of control. Great to see them get nominated, I thought. This also from Marky B, I was very impressed that crowd of that being replays, the, um, well, formerly known as replays, now known as crowd of course, the coach of Atlanta phase, him and Marky B both got nominated, so really cool to see. I think Marky B honestly deserves a lot of credit for what they achieved this season with the decision he made, right, to bench methods and bring an insight to the team, and um, really just the, the entire season long was, um, yeah, certainly Marky B had a lot to do with, I think, with their success. These are all the players that are up for nomination, so color caster is Chance, Nameless is, uh, well, nominated for Analyst of the Year, but play-by-play -play caster is Miles, coaches, Crowder and Marky B, controller player, Simpen and Beezy, controller rookie, Insight, Hydra and Stanny, and for team, we've got Lantaphase and some other ones as well that we'll have a look at right here in a second. If you go to the website, you'll find this, your votes, can't if you click on a talent categories, you'll start off right here. So we can go through, we can click a nameless baby. He's looking mind blown. We've got Chance down here on the bottom right. We've got, um, if we keep on going, okay, so on a talent, I'm not really sure in terms of hosting, we got anyone ready, but of course we've got Puck here, right? Legend in the scene. Probably have to give it to Puck to be honest. And, uh, you know, Golden Boy as well deserves a mention. And, um, who we got here? Play by play class for the year. Where's Miles? There he is, baby. Let's go. And, yeah, player of the month. Okay, this is kind of cool. So, um, yeah, player of the month, August 2021. I see Cammy here. I'm guessing that's going to be his crazy four piece that he got against Atlanta Phase in, um, well, that raid session destroy round. I'm sure you guys remember. Between Crowder and Marky B here, we're going to give it to Marky B. I think that's fair enough. Controller player of the year. I've got to give it to one of Simple or Beezy. And, you know, what do they choose this picture of Sim? They're going to choose like a more action shot like they've chosen to Beezy. I'm going to say Sim. I think he was the number one player, but totally, uh, totally up for debate for sure. I'm going to say Inside Rookie of the Year. I think, um, I think on the whole, totally deserves it. And at Mobile Player of the Year, I don't really know. Then at Esports Organization of the Year, kind of interesting. A lot of these orgs have, of course, been involved in Call of Duty in the past. The likes of Envy Phase. I mean, pretty much all these orgs, apart from T1, have at some point or another allowed, or T allowed. You know, TSM has been in Call of Duty as well. Pretty much every single team on it has been in COD at one point or another. Some of these orgs, like, started off in COD and have been in Call of Duty at the present time. For example, NRG, technically in Call of Duty right now. 100 Thieves, of course, with Los Angeles Thieves. Overactive Media, of course, that also deserves a mention because they own Toronto Ultra. But, um, I don't know, we'll give it to 100 Thieves. They've been killing it right now. And so, yeah, okay, PC Player of the Year. I don't really know too much. I don't watch too many PC. Okay, we've got to give it to Simple. That's just how it goes. But anyway, those are the awards. If you guys want to, well, do the entire thing, feel free to follow the link down below and check the entire thing out. The boys are on our way to vote for Miles Ross and Charles Gas for the best casters. But yeah, definitely up for debate really there in terms of like, a, well, let's say Controller Player of the Year. I think that Simple and Abizi um, definitely deserve a mention. It was very impressive, to be honest, like how, uh, well, how dominant Atlanta Phase were in these uh, in these rankings, like not only in terms of team, to actually vote for them in terms of team. Maybe I forgot to do that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Esports Team of the Year. There we go. We got them in, baby. And um, yeah, anyway, so Atlanta Phase Team of the Year totally makes sense. Usually, cop players do particularly well in these type of rankings. I think, uh, you know, we, we've had Kenny, for example, win a Rookie of the Year back in 2018 after his World War II season. Could probably have also won, like, Controller Player of the Year or whatever in that year as well, because he was certainly spectacular on that title. But um, yeah, I mean, definitely interesting to see. Great to see some of the, the analysts and, the, you know, coaching staff get uh, nominated as well. I thought Marky B especially was a very good nomination. And um, well, hopefully someone comes out on top from the Call of Duty scene. I'm sure we'll see. 
I think they do it like November time or, you know, December, something along those lines. Just wanted to finish off with this that came out from Accuracy. I feel like, um, you know, Optic fans get bagged on a lot for this moment. And Accuracy, well, I suppose he rubs salt in the wounds. He comes out with his breakdown of the 1v3 against Optic, kind of what he what was going through his mind, what was going through the rest of the team's minds. And this is something that um, I do certainly credit Accuracy for in this situation. Like, yes, it was very lucky they all lined up for him. But um, yeah, I think a lot of players wouldn't have made the play that Accuracy did. He made realistically the only ever play that was going to win him that round. He knew that it was a very limited chance that he even won it regardless. But he had to make the play that he made to have a chance, as he explains in this clip. And um, of course, a legendary moment was most certainly born. Of course, going to be on Seattle Surge for this upcoming year. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. I really upset the YouTube icon. I know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'll grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. All right, y'all. We're going to talk about that round. Y'all know what round I'm talking about. So right here, I spot them all mid. I'm like, oh my god, they're all mid. Run, run, run. Stay alive. I get away, and I'm asking my team. I'm like, yo, should I rap A? Should I rap A? No one's really responding because they're so focused on their fights. And then, boom, two dead. In that moment, I lost full. I was like, bruh. Rap out to Pillars. Get a freebie on Envoy. I don't think he expected me to be there that fast. I hit Matt with the nade right there, and then in that moment, everyone's like, yo, wait for Dylan, wait for Dylan, wait for Dylan. So I wait for Dylan. He makes them weak, and I'm like, okay, I have to challenge right now while they're both weak, or else it's over. Because if they all regenerate their health and it's a 3v1, it's a 0% chance, basically. But with two of them weak and one full health, if I challenge at that moment, I have like a 2% chance to win it.